One of the first videos posted on this channel was made in this garden and it has since become one of the best few videos on here. Over the last years I have seen it evolve and I am super glad that today we get to check back with the vipers, the other animals and some new additional builds. For those who have seen the previous video will see that this outdoor enclosure had a small downsize and a nice trim done to make space for other projects. Still I think it looks absolutely great with a nice healthy pond full of fish and a trio of European pond turtles, the Emmys Orbicularis. The Emmys were not shy at all and basked in full sight or came swimming towards us begging for food. This enclosure also houses a small group of Lacetta agilis, some Bufoferides and slow worms, but it was very warm so the agilis were way too fast and the other animals tried to escape the heat. You can imagine that all these structures provided made for plenty of opportunities to hide and get some relief in the cooler areas. Although there were many options to hide and hibernate, also here some barrels dug into the ground were used for the animals to reside in during hibernation. It is a simple solution but works really well to create a dry, safe area for the animals to hibernate in. Although over the years the glass has gotten a bit stained, I still like the almost unobstructed view you have of the whole setup. It is also a perfect smooth wall to prevent animals from climbing out or maybe in. I don't think I could use a barrier like this for a big tortoise, but if you plan on building an outdoor enclosure for herb to fauna like snakes, lizards or amphibians, then this would be a great option. What I thought was really cool were the small bog areas around the enclosure filled with sphagnum and a lot of carnivorous plants. As you can see they caught a lot of flies and it is a nice natural bug control that also looks pretty cool. The owner keeps more and more animals outdoors, so inside the bigger enclosure he placed this small prefab greenhouse to raise captive bred lizards. It had a nice footprint and with the walls dug into the ground it was a safe way to house the young Placerta bilineata. The canopy could be opened and had a simple but effective closing mechanism so you could close the top lids very easily. Also you could choose to have a complete mesh top so there was plenty of natural sunlight and UV, but in case of too much sun or if you wanted to keep in heat or maybe there was too much rain, you could actually add polycarbonate sliding doors on top of these lids. It fit absolutely perfectly and overall I thought it was a really cool addition. This greenhouse is available on Amazon, so for those interested I will add a link in the description. Maybe it's something for you. Now let's take a look at one of the new builds, standing for about two years now. I have to say the building quality of this structure is really well done. I would almost say welcome in Germany. This thing has solid concrete walls, thick glass in a nice frame, overhanging ledges to prevent animals climbing out and a removable mesh top to keep birds or cats out of the enclosure. 
Also this enclosure had many layers, there was a small pond, many natural structures. Flowering plants were used to attract insects where the lizards, a small group of Lacerta bilineata and Lacerta agilis, could prey upon. If you looked from the side you would gaze upon this nice raised stone wall. This area catches the most sunlight in the enclosure, so it was a preferred basking area for the lizards. Now let's get to the good stuff, the vipers. In these enclosures, several species of vipers are kept and bred outdoors year round. When it comes to these setups, not a lot has changed. It works, so why change it? The setups still have high concrete walls, overhanging ledges. There are screen tops with a part polycarbonate, part used to keep any animals out but also to make sure there's always a drier area in the enclosure. Also, the love for succulents was used to create an extra barrier against curious animals. In some enclosures, the vegetation was a bit less as seen in the previous video. It has mostly to do with the fact that it was really dry over the last period. But also, some of these vipers were outdoors for the first year. So the owner wanted to make sure that he could observe what was going on. And of course, the animals were breeding and you wanna make sure that you find the young. The footprint of the enclosures was two square meters and the same principle as the other outdoor enclosures was used. A lot of structures, there was a barrel for the animals to hide in and it was covered by all these rocks so the animals could bask. As you can see, there are plenty of layers, some vegetation, some wood. Overall, a really nice environment, perfect for these vipers. One of the species that was not seen in the previous video were this Vipera rufoi. Those were moved outdoors after the making of that video. This is a subspecies of the Vipera amoditis, found in the southern Tyrol region in Italy. To me, it looks a little bit like the Vipera amoditis you can find on the creation island of Krk, if I pronounced that correctly. But I am sure the true knowledgeable people will see the obvious differences. One of the females actually seen gravid, and despite the high temperatures, these snakes did not seem to mind and were seen throughout the day. They blended in so well with the rock work in this setup. A species that has been successfully kept and bred outdoors now for a long time were these wonderful Vipera aspis atra. This species is not born black, but many specimens will get darker when getting older. Later in this video we actually get to see some young, so you can see the difference with these adults. Vipera aspis is a wonderful species with a few interesting subspecies and locality forms. In the previous video, you get to see a few more of those, but for this video, we're gonna stick to the Atra. In this enclosure are some more black snakes, but these are not the Vipera aspis atra. This is one of the viper species that for a long time keepers had issues with keeping successfully in captivity. And they are still relatively rare in the hobby. These are Vipera kasnakovi, the species that made me first meet this keeper over 10 years ago. So you can imagine how long he has been breeding them successfully. These particular animals have been kept and bred indoors by the owner for many many years. Over the last few years though, the females stopped producing. And eventually the owner decided to take them outdoors where they have been for a bit more than a year now. And while editing this video, I got these messages. 
I thought this was really cool and I definitely wanted to share with you. And I think it just goes to show how beneficial keeping these animals outdoors can be. And these are the lovely Vipera bears, also known as the common viper. As you can see, there's a nice group in here and they do really well and also, again, breed in here. I think this is a perfect species to keep outdoors because they are from this area. So they are perfectly adapted to conditions of this area because they would naturally live in this range. To finish this video we take a look into the greenhouse full of cacti and succulents doing well in the warm and light environment. And if we look on the floor there were these green terrariums used to actually house whole back vipers, including these absolutely stunning two-year-old Vipera Kasnakovi, almost entirely raised on crickets and grasshoppers. And that will be the end of this video. I hope you got some inspiration for your own keeping or simply enjoyed the sight of these wonderful animals. It was a long, warm day, but I'm glad I was able to share it with you.